in the broad did yesterday. I'm asking you guys to look at the squares. We're going to go ahead and start now. Uh, welcome to the uh, City of Las Vegas Downtown Design and Chief Committee meeting for August 26, 2004. Or 2014, sorry. Uh, we we'll call the meeting to order. The meeting. Go ahead and call the roll. Chair Kuzil. Present. Vice Chair Heiser. Yes. Member Nolan. Member Hoffman. Present. Member Bracker. Present. Member Obama. Present. Member Obama. Present. Thank you. Uh, this meeting has been noticed and probably noticed it is in compliance with the open meeting law. <coughs> Uh, we have a brief announcement from the city attorney before we go further. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, commission, uh, after the last meeting last week, uh, we had someone call in the planning department raising concern about uh, a one or two members voting on several of the items. Uh, the, the issue in a nutshell was that the caller was concerned that because a member had a conflict on one, that they were required to abstain on all. Uh, we talked about this yesterday at the meeting, but the fact of the matter is we're talking about uh, 281, uh, 421, and this question is uh, when you need to disclose and vote, and when must you abstain? The fact of the matter is uh, 421 talks about whether uh, one's independence of judgment is materially affected um, by the alleged conflict. And 424B, there are two things that we need to put on the record. One, 21A, 424B uh, indicates that because of extension by the, a public officer disrupts the normal course of representative government and deprives the public and the public officer's constituents of a voice in governmental affairs, the provisions of this section are intended to require abstention only in clear cases where the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in that officer's situation would be materially affected by the public officer's commitment and the private capacity and interests of others. Sub 4 says, we must presume that the independence of judgment of a reasonable person in the public officer situation would not be affected materially by the public officer's commitment and private capacity to the interests of others where the resulting benefit or detriment accruing to the officer is not greater than that accruing to any other member of any other general business, profession, occupation, or group that is affected by the matter. In this case, we have a member that is a property manager uh, at one site. We've got a, another commissioner that uh, is a contractor. In both cases, um, the profession of uh, providing contracting services, the profession of providing property management services um, would, would not um, be, their independence of judgment would not be materially affected. There is a second part of this test, however, and, is it, and it, it is whether they subjectively believe that they will have their independence of judgment materially affected. I do need to ask the two members if that will be the case. Uh, the first would be for uh, Attorney Shotman. I know that you want to disclose a few items. Yes. Um, so uh, on Desivere of Las Vegas, uh, I've been speaking to the property owner about potentially building out their space. Um, and, and so that being the case, I have decided to go ahead and abstain on that matter. Uh, the second item is, um, I'm, I'm unsure which application that is, uh, and I'm going to need help trying to figure that one out. But um, I have an ongoing business relationship um, on a different project where we had constructed some gray shell improvements and um, are continuing to construct uh, non-medical marijuana. Want to relate it, however, since they are a partner uh, on one of the applications before us, I'll go ahead and abstain on that item as well. Okay, so what I'm hearing from you is, is um, I have given advice that you 
uh, under the law must disclose, but you can vote because of uh, sub sub 24B, but subjectively you're going to decide on those items to abstain. I am giving you advice, City Attorney's is giving you advice so you can vote on the entirety of the rest because your independence of judgment will not be materially affected because of the relationships that you have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Truesdale? And just add one more point. Yes. The other one where I have the ongoing business relationship was uh, was reviewed before this uh, before this committee at the last meeting, so um, the only be one that I'll be standing on today. Okay. Uh, Chair Truesdale? Yes. And as I've done at the last meeting and in the meeting yesterday, I've made uh, continuous disclosures. I do manage properties that are subject to applications under this meeting and have a financial interest in those properties. I also have one of the workers in my office has represented one of the application, applicants in another jurisdiction. I've given a list of all of, the, of those potential conflicts to the city attorney, and I will abstain on those items. Um, here's the, if anybody here feels that they... Well, let's, let's just put, leave it at that. Let me say this. Uh, I have given you advice that because of your role as property manager in relation to the conflicts you've disclosed, uh, under 424B, uh, uh, because uh, your independent judgments uh, will not be materially affected by your interest to others, uh, you, may, you may disclose and you may vote. But subjectively what I'm hearing is on certain items, you are going to abstain because of that. And I'll make a further disclosure at that time. Please do. Thank you. All right. Now we come to that portion of the meeting, which is public comment. During this portion of the agenda, must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard at this point in time, please come forward, and time will be limited. Maybe we should speak on public comment. Seeing no one, we'll go ahead. Yes. Uh, we have one quick announcement that anybody that needs a parking validation at the end of the meeting here, or when they leave, please see the clerk over here. That'd be the best one with parking. There's no question about it. Okay. Uh, now we'll go to item four. SUP 55284 DDRC special use permit, non-public hearing, applicant, Buffalo Center Medical Advocates, LLC, owner, SSG Properties, LLC, for possible action on a request for a review of building and signage elevations only in association with a proposed 1,630 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1591 North Buffalo Drive. Is the applicant here? Okay, please come forward. Staff? Mr. Chair, uh, on this particular application, the dispensary is going to be located in a strict commercial center. They have limited frontage in the center. There are no proposed changes to the actual building itself. Uh, there is one sign proposed for the elevations, approximately 20 square feet in area. Staff finds that the elevations and the signage are in conformance with state and local requirements and have recommended approval uh, of the proposed sign package. I would ask that the applicant identify and speak a little bit more about your signage in terms of the construction of the signage and the illumination of the signage. Sure. Uh, Robert Hasman. Um, Name that or address as well. Uh, Robert Hasman. Home address 628. We're actually going to hang the sign uh, just on the building. We're not going to turn on the sign. It's going to be right above uh, the store. Uh, And you're familiar with um, staff's comments with the carriage you signed? Uh, yeah, I think there was comments about the money. Yes. Yeah. And you're in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is on public hearing. Uh, members? Yes, uh, uh, Chairman. I, I do have a question. I, I'm confused. I don't know which sign this is. I, I, I see about 20 signs, and I don't mm -hmm. see any kind of indication of what your sign is going to look like. Uh, it's just going to be a hand letter. It's right about the space. 
which is worn out, which oh. space would actually be neat. So this was an old vapor shop back here. So the sign would sit, see what is white. Um, okay, go ahead. That's, that's you can see it now. Yeah. And yeah. staff reviewed the dimensions of that yes. can, and it does meet our requirements? Yes, it's 20 square feet, so it is less internally illuminated. Correct. Okay. All okay. uh, right. And you don't have a logo or anything that you want to show us? Or? Uh, no. Okay, that's fine. With, with not the litmus test here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, members, any other comments or questions? Mr. Chairman, I visited the site, and there are many of them that are on that site. Specifically on the east trash enclosures and also on the parking lot signs or cigarette signs. I know you're not the proper one, but I think we should have a condition that indicates that some of you are moved by the time you can sign. So I'm not going to make a motion for approval. Chairman, I, 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 just, I just wonder how we're going to condition this applicant, a lessee, uh, on the removal of somebody else's signage when he doesn't really have control over it. I, I, I think it's good that it's on the record. I think maybe he can acknowledge that he's going to talk with the owner, but to, uh, I, th I don't think there's a nexus between uh, his his uh, his basket and his bucket of sticks and the ownership. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to be able to, to comply with that. So. I have a question of stating that the property owner ends up being opposed to the rent from his tenant. If the property owner chooses to keep his site in a manner that's non conforming to the code, the property owner should be from the compliance. Yeah, it's said and have a condition that any temporary owner can be removed. I'm assuming that. Well, you are the chairman for the, you are the commissioners. You can, you can have whatever you feel like you do. Okay. Any other questions? There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is passed. And I think the, the main thrust is you're the unpaid messenger. Okay. <laughs> and he does want your rent check, I'm sure. <laughs> now we go to item five. The SUP 55103 DDS special use permit non dedicated in the applicant Metafarm LLC owner DKM Development LLC for possible action on required required for review of the building and sign elevations only in association with the proposed 3,939 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1921 Western Avenue. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jennifer Roberts of Lionel Center and Collins, 300 South 4th Street. I'm appearing on behalf of the applicant Meta Farm, and I'm joined by two executives, uh, Salwa Ibrahim and Jim Nemechek, and in the audience is uh, Eric Christensen, the architect, um, and Salwa and Jim do oversee current medical marijuana dispensary operations in Oakland, California. We understand staff reported the elevations as submitted, which uh, consisted of photographs of the site as of today as being non-compliant. Uh, we want to confirm that we will, with, that we intend to enhance the appearance of the site uh, with exterior painting in a neutral color scheme that is appropriate for a pharmacy or, or uh, medical use. With our exterior, exterior also contains subtle exterior signage that is in compliance um, with the signage requirements of the city. And we'll be adding landscaping as well to improve the site appearance. We will work with staff uh, to ensure we have design in conformance with the Las Vegas standards before the planning commission. And we appreciate your consideration and ask um, that you follow staff's recommendation of approval. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to let you read <laughs> On behalf of staff, we did have some concerns about the appearance of the building. Ms. Roberts has already addressed that, that we'll be painting the building. They are part of a multi-tenant building, and so there's a limited amount of work that can be done with that, understandably. Uh, in terms of the actual signage itself, the signage is proposed to be approximately 15 square feet, so it does comply with the dimensional limitations in our code and will be internally illuminated. Uh, they did provide elevations of the proposed signage with the, uh, the name of the business bloom there on it. 
staff finds that to be in conformance with our regulations, and so we are recommending approval of this application. That's the supplemental information that we received? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. And you are in agreement with staff's conditions then? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, members? Comments? Member Brescher. There is an existing pole for retaining signs. It's very left of the bottom photo. There is no sign on that pole, but I just appreciate your comment that you would remove that pole from the site. Right. Okay. Any other comments? Feedback? Motion? Um, just one last comment. So you will have full um, elevations and landscape and everything before it comes to the planning commission. So we'll be able to see what you're doing and not be walking in blindly. Yes, we can have color renderings of our paint scheme as well as landscaping before and without changes as I've discussed with staff. Okay. okay. And, this is, fire site. and this is the point where we're going to make the same disclosure we made and comments we made to the group last Tuesday mm -hmm. is that at this meeting, because it's elevations, and this committee has it's recommending has a little more flexibility uh, in this overall process um, but when you get to planning it's envisioned that these applications will be absolute complete because there is no catch-up time there's no uh, so what planning will see they will vote on and you want to have if you're not complete you may not get the vote you're looking for any applicant and we'll work with staff on our particular matter to um, submit elevations that envision what we've just discussed today. Okay, and uh, hopefully we can just get that there in a timely manner so they Correct. have time to process that and not present it the day of planning commission. Of course. Okay, uh, motion. Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve such conditions, and that includes removal of the the freestanding pole? Yes. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. You. Now we go to uh, item six, SUP 55182, DDRC, special use permit non public here. Applicant Nature X2 LLC, owner WAPP LLC, <laughs> possible action on her request for a review of a building and sign elevation only in association with a proposed 2,800 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1860 Western Avenue. And <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, uh, the applicant is in a building that also has uh, uh, an existing tenant in it, they're occupying a vacant space as a portion of that building. They're proposing to make some minor changes to the elevations in removing the storefront windows uh, and then uh, basically using a, uh, an ethos or a faux stucco uh, finish to match the existing building. In terms of the signage itself, they're proposing a sign that's approximately 30 square feet in area. Uh, the sign will be internally illuminated. The signage conforms with our code requirements, and we are recommending approval of this subject to condition. Okay. And just a matter of being cautious, I've, I've known the Fry family in, uh, for years. Uh, on a casual basis, it does not affect my ability to vote on the item in any way, shape, or form. Thank you. Well, you, you can go ahead and vote then. Yes, I will vote. Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm Greg Bordeaux, 300 South Fort Street, here representing the application. We have the principals here. If you have questions for them, uh, we appreciate the staff's favorable recommendation. Hope you will do the same. We were um, a little taken aback by the end under the compliance line on the north face of our building elevation. Uh, in effect, uh, our building has no north elevation. It is immediately abutting the building to its north. So our north wall is the south wall. And we rather thought it should say NA as in not applicable. But for the record, we did note it, and uh, perhaps at the next level, it would be reflected that. And yes, it should probably say NA, but you don't have a north elevation staff that agree with you. And uh, we accept the conditions, and uh, think this is a quality site that we uh, uh, should appreciate the appearance of. Members, comments, questions? 
motion. Chairman, on SUP 55182, I move to approve subject to staff's conditions. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mayor, very much for your time today. Now we go to item 7, DDRC 55187, or SUP 55187, the DDRC Special Use Permit, non-public hearing applicant, Acres Medical LLC, owner 2020 Western LLC for possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with the proposed 5,182 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 2320 Western Avenue. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, the applicant is proposing to make some minor modifications to the building and site, including some landscaping on the Western Avenue frontage. Uh, in terms of the signage, this is a through parcel that has frontage on both Western Avenue and Highland. They're proposing one sign of approximately 30 square feet facing Western, and then a second sign on the rear elevation facing Highland. Uh, the signage is in conformance with our code requirements and staff is recommending approval of the request. Okay. Good, Good afternoon, John Layton, this is my repertory law firm, 3773 Howard Hughes Parkway here on behalf of the applicant. Um, as uh, Mr. Bag mentioned, um, this is the application for SUP of partial SUP of um, requirements for a marijuana establishment uh, we feel that our application meets all ordinances and requirements and we appreciate staff staff recommendation approval the, uh, the only clarification that i would like to make is with respect to that slide right there um, that slide right there notes that the uh, signage um, or that the letters on the signs will be um, two feet by 15 feet, and it's actually the entire sign will be two feet by 15 feet, so that's like that one clarification. And uh, again, I'm going to thank you for that recommendation for a little bit of answering the question. Okay. Now there was, on this part, if I remember correctly, when I went by there, um, there's a pole sign that was on the western frontage. There's a billboard sign that's right there. Um, that is. Um, Maybe I was looking at just a real estate sign, but. Yes. Um, now, there are two freestanding ground signs: one on the western, one on the highland. Okay. The one on the highland is the one that you can see. There. It appears to be a billboard, but that's actually a sign, freestanding sign from Goodyear. Yes. Tire shop used to be yes. And you're in agreement that you will not use those signs in any way, shape, or form for this business. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Are you planning on doing any building facade improvements, color changes, anything like that? Yes, the, um, the, the site will be substantially redeveloped in the fact that there's approximately $2.5 million that's been allocated for the uh, redevelopment, rehabilitation of this building. Um, the entire building will undergo a facelift and, and as well as painting, landscaping. Uh, water tanks will be added, as you see those, those blue objects there, are, our water tanks will be added to the exterior of the building. Uh, the top of the building will be, uh, the roof of the building will be completely redone and, and uh, glass will be placed on the top of the building. So these gaps are not there to substantial uh, renovations that will be done. So. Okay, thank you. Question, John. Yes. Would this, would the entire building be used for this process or be separate tenants? No, the entire building will be used. This is uh, we should already see the sale. Um, Application that is that I would that be known. I don't believe that sign a billboard, I believe it's an on premise sign. It, it is an on premise sign. Okay, so with that, I would ask that that sign be removed and the one also on the western part of the application. Okay. You're in agreement with that? Yes. Okay. Then, um, if that's a second question, I might have misunderstood it again. There's one sign, I thought somebody said there was two signs. On Western Avenue, it's proposed to have a wall sign on Western Avenue and then also a wall sign facing the Highland Drive side. The building goes through the street. It has frontage on both streets. Right, and then the billboard sign is not 
part of this application. So what we use for any LED sign. <laughs> So that's on the yeah. website actually on yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Chad is the sign on the web we get here. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'll talk to Mr. Lidl. Or not part of this application. It will not be used whatsoever. Well, I guess the question is why would they use the sign on the web? It's keeping it. It's not a good The design did not call for the removal of the sign. However, you would propose that condition if you have to accept it. I believe signs are not used with them, but they're extremely prone to be abandoned through our program here in Denver. So I would make, if you want to make a multiple approval, my commission would be to put those three tank grounds on to be removed as part of this application. Now that I have a second. Uh, we have a second? Uh, uh, so uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Is it a trial? And we put that same condition on multiple yes. sites so last week. We can get it People give up some interest in design places. Thank you. Okay. 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 So now we're going to go to item eight. SUP five five two zero seven DDRC special use permit non public hearing applicant Desert Air Wellness LLC owner Cecil Properties LLC for possible action on a request for a review of the building and sign elevation only in association with the proposed 2,268-square-foot medical marijuana dispensary at 420 East Sahara. Mr. this will be one that I'll be able to stand on for, for, for the, same, uh, the same reasons that we spoke about earlier as I spoke to the owners of and gave them a short of Very good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a disclosure here uh, as much as there are no distance separation in our, our downtown design review sign packages, but I do manage a property that has an application within a block of this site, and for that purpose, I will make that disclosure and for the and, and we'll vote. But I want to make that disclosure. Yeah, and, and chairman, because uh, uh, you, because you're representing a sign at some at some point. Uh, Near the site, uh, you, your company, and your representation of that sign is no different uh, than any other company that might be representing that or a sign. So you can vote on this matter. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, city, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, I didn't have the staff report in my packet, and you may not have had the staff report in your packet for this item, item number eight. In your supplemental information, we do have a copy of the staff report. And uh, there is just one condition that's attached to that, and that's basically our standard condition that all development needs to be in conformance with the site plan, building elevations, and sign elevations. In terms of the actual application itself, this is a standalone building that's located at the intersection of Sahara Avenue and Santa Rita. We are proposing two signs on the building, one wall sign facing Sahara, and then a second wall sign facing Santa Rita. Uh, both of the signs are internally illuminated. They will be approximately 20 square feet in size. As the signage conforms to our requirements for medical marijuana establishment, staff has recommended approval of this uh, with the standard condition as I've already read into the record. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee. My name is Greg Esposito, 1442 White Drive, representing Desert Air Wellness. Um, on this uh, special use permit for a sign and elevation improvement for the Metro Valley Center 420 East of Sahara. Uh, we uh, agree with and appreciate staff's recommendation of approval. And we, I do need to mention one thing. If you take a look at uh, the elevation right there, it's stamped 84, and their conditions of approval uh, date stamp 87. I believe a new, uh, new elevation should have been submitted where there's a line across the top part. The building is not going to change. Uh, the building's top is not going to change, and so I don't want to misrepresent what's going to happen here. Uh, if you had an actual picture of the building, you'll see that the top part is half tile, and then, as you can see, half parapet wall. That's going to remain exactly the same, and the elevation drawings that you're putting up on the screen have it as one solid piece. So I just want to make sure that the, the committee is clear that um, that is not going to change. We're not going to put tile all the way up. It's going to remain exactly as you see in the picture right there, except, of course, with the new signage. 
So I want to be very clear for that on record. Uh, that was our understanding as part of our analysis. I just want to get it approved on one vote and then have to come back because we're not changing it. And you're occupying the entire building, right? Yes, the entire building, the 424 address is going to go away. It's going to, going to do a lot of demolition on the internal part of the building. Uh, board up that one window that's up front. Uh, move the door over further east to accommodate the, uh, the, tra the foot traffic in and out, the waiting room and the, and the display area. But yes, we are going to occupy the entire building. And you will, you will agree to remove all the ground, not its signs? Yes, yes, I, yes, I have them in my pictures here. Those are for the existing uh, businesses. I don't know if they're even allowed to have them there, but they will be gone. Okay. So all the people can go research yourself in the signage if we're allowed. All right, number? Just one quick question. I don't know if the photo's up to date, but there's Constantina wire at the rear of the property on the roof. Uh, if you would like that removed, I mean, we of course need to keep the security. I, I, I do know what picture you're talking about. We do need to keep the security of the place. Uh, but if, if you want to uh, put that in there that we remove the Constantine wire, we will probably still like to keep some sort of security measure there, the wrought iron gate, uh, things like that. But if you find that that's unsightly, uh, we can... Uh, yeah, the wire needs to go. We'll, we'll take that wire. <laughs> yes. And, and just as an added note to that, uh, all of the applicants are required to submit a security plan, uh, which hopefully includes some type of video monitoring, uh, and so the need for the concert, you know, wire is probably lessened by the other security measures that they'll have in place as part of their security plan for the facility. Okay. If there are no other comments from the members, motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. And that does include the conditions. Of course. Thank you very much. Now we got item 9, SUP 55216, DDRC, special use for the non public hearing, applicant owner, Yazaman Timraz, a possible action and request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with the proposed 1,715 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 5 or 815 South 3rd Street. Is the applicant here? Okay, seeing no applicant, we will trail this item um, to the end of the meeting and at that point we'll make a decision. Item 10, SUP 55218, BDRC Special Use for Non Public Hearing, Applicant, Boulevard Medical LLC, Owner, Heard Properties LLC, for possible action on a request for review of a building and sign elevation only with a waiver to allow an internal illuminated wall sign where no neon, or at least 75% of neon is required within the Las Vegas Boulevard City Byway Overlay district in association with proposed 3,272 square foot medical marijuana dispensary. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, first, before I talk about the uh, proposed signage for the property, I need to offer some guidance in terms of waivers from the scenic byway designation. I did speak to this briefly last week uh, at our meeting. Uh, because we do have a number of dispensaries that will be located within the scenic byway, as you're aware, there is a requirement that properties within the city highway have uh, signage that's either neon or animated, at least 70 percent. Because of the unique nature of the medical marijuana uh, uses, there is a limitation in Title 1912 relative to medical marijuana establishments that they can't use neon. And so in the case where we have dispensary applications that are located within the scenic byway, staff is recommending approval of waivers from the requirement for neon and animated signage based on the unique character of the use. And so in this particular application and also in any subsequent applications that may be in the scenic byway, you'll notice that we do recommend approval of the waiver from the scenic byway requirements. 
one of the reasons that we're doing it, not only because of the use, but because there's such a limited number of dispensaries that will be permitted, we don't think it's going to impact our scenic byway designation, uh, as all other uses will still be required to have neon or animated signage. And so, again, that's the basis for our decisions and our recommendations. And, <coughs> Chairman, I'd like to add even more to that. The city attorney's office would would offer that your discretion is limited in this case to, to deny a waiver uh, because there's a, a lack of neon. The reason being is this. There's some, when you tell a statutory interpretation, we have a couple Latin maxims, but uh, basically we've got one part of the code that says you got to have neon. We've got a newer part of the code that says no neon for these specific uses. But there's a Latin maxim in statutory interpretation that says the specific controls the general. No neon on medical marijuana establishments. The general is you've got to have 75% neon, right? So in this case, the specific controls the general, and the newer controls the older. This is a very new statute. Uh, the, the neon requirement is an older statute. I would suggest to you that your discretion is quite limited to deny a waiver in these circumstances. Okay. And with that, I'll launch into our report. <laughs> this proposed dispensary is also going to be located in a multi-tenant building. Uh, no uh, major changes to the building are being proposed. In terms of the signage, there's one sign that's proposed. It will be facing Las Vegas Boulevard. It will be approximately 30 square feet in area, internally illuminated. Uh, and based on that, submittal staff has recommended approval of this request. And as I've indicated, also recommended approval of the waiver from the scenic highway. Mr. Chairman, and members of Great Board, L300 South 4th Street here on the application. Uh, we appreciate uh, staff's favorable recommendation. We accept the conditions. I would point out that in excess of caution, uh, not having at hand a legal opinion, our architect turned in two signs. Uh, one, which is displayed here, says it has neon. And he turned in the same sign without the neon. And we understand that what you're intending to approve is the one without the neon. Correct. And with that, Okay. And there, if I remember correctly, there is a, or was a freestanding pylon on that property. If there is, you're not going to be a part of it? That's correct. Okay. I have one question. This site does have triple frontage. You have the one side. Uh, that's correct. We think, uh, well, first of all, the rear is, doesn't give you much exposure. Uh, and the front is... Uh, clearly where the business will come from. So we're expecting to only do one time. I gather we're entitled to do one in each country. But at this point, uh, it seems like that the property works off us. I guess the question of staff would be, if they came in from the two other countries at a later date, would we get another application? It would have to be a separate application. So knowing that, should I be willing to entertain three signs if that's the applicant? Well, we certainly don't object to being allowed to have three signs in the future. We've got to come back. I, I guess I'm... Do we have three signs? No, no, no. 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 We're proposing one. There are three frontages. We could have asked for three. And uh, Member Bratcher is saying that rather than have us come back if we change our mind, that we can approve the same sign on all three frontages. Obviously, that was not something we would object to. Right. But I think, well, I think the application before us is the one sign that I would, I'd rather err on that, at least my perspective. The yeah. motion may read differently. Uh, member? Yes. Um, Mr. Porgo, what, what, what's your intentions with the improvements to the building facade? And, and answer this question first. It's the portion that's tan all the way at the end of the building, is that correct? That's correct. It's the end unit there. Um, it's in relatively good shape. Uh, uh, we uh, intend to maintain the essence of what's there now, although uh, paint up and clean up and, and so forth. But they, we think that, frankly, it, it shows pretty well uh, with the sign that we will put on the front and, and the clean up of, uh, and repainting. We're not proposing to amend it to match the balance of the center. We think it's a cleaner look the way it is. Right. So just to clarify, it, the exterior will be painted? Will be, there will be new paint on the exterior? Yes, that is the intention. But substantially in the current color. Understood. Okay. Is there any other questions? Motion? 
Chair, I make a motion to approve item number 10, SEC 5528, under the staff conditions, including a waiver of the same violation standard. And that's for the one sign? One sign. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, now we go to item 11, SEC 55233, DDRC Special Use for the Non-Public Hearing, Applicant Integral Associates, LLC, under GTAC Development, LLC, for possible action on request for a review of building and sign elevations only in association with the proposed 2,542-square-foot metal marijuana dispensary at 2307 South Las Vegas Boulevard. I am going to abstain on this item, being as much as I am the property manager and financial interest in this property, and we'll turn this over to uh, member uh, Nolan. Very good. And Mr. Bordell, you're the representative. Yes, sir. And so, so, we have the staff report. Certainly. Uh, this location will also be in a multi-tenant building. They'll be occupying one of the tenant spaces within the building. They are proposing a single sign facing Las Vegas Boulevard. The sign is approximately, what is that, about seven square feet in area, Mr. Borgel? Yeah, that's perfect. Well, I guess it depends on how you measure it, uh, but yes, I mean, I would say so. If you draw a square around all the buildings, you get a different number than if you can. Okay. The emblem is a separate sign, uh, but then you would not uh, quibble with the uh, description of it is seven and a half square feet. Okay, so approximately seven and a half square feet in area, so it's substantially below the 30 square feet that would be permitted. Um, this is also in the scenic byway. I do need to add uh, two conditions to the condition of approval that's currently in place. Uh, the first condition would be um, a waiver of the scenic, Las Vegas Scenic Byway Elimination Standards is hereby approved as one of staff's recommended conditions. And then secondly, the use of neon is prohibited. So if there is a motion to approve the signage and elevations, I would ask that those two conditions be added as part of the conditions for the approval. Our commissioners, do you have any comments? Mr. Uh, no, sir. Uh, we accept the conditions. Uh, this is uh, an, uh, a currently unoccupied unit that needs a lot of work to make it uh, something the city should be proud of and they can do. I'll entertain a motion based on staff's approval. Staff's recommendations. That's staff's recommendations. With the added conditions. conditions. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any matters for the second? And what if said? And what if said? Now we go to item 13, SUP 5548, DDRC Special Use Permit. Non. Did I screw up? Yeah, you did. I did. Okay, we're going to go to item 12. SUP 55234 DDRC Special Use Permit, Not a Public Hearing Applicant, Blossom Group LLC, Owner Lehi Lin, or Lee Lin and James LLC, for a possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 932 or 962 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 810 South 4th Street. Mr. Chairman, Steve Swanton, uh, Department of Planning. The proposed dispensary would be located within an existing single-story office building that has the appearance of a residential dwelling. Signage consists of a single internally illuminated cabinet on the east elevation that is in compliance with all of the uh, Title 19 requirements. Staff notes that the cabinet was proposed to be mounted over a window. Uh, but recommends approval of this request. And the uh, sign elevations were not included in the backup, but they are located in your supplemental packet for item 12. And they are shown up on the screen as well. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. 
Scott Rudy, 7115, Rebuild Street, here on behalf of the applicant. We are in agreement with staff's recommendation for approval and would also request your approval of this <coughs> design review for the sign as well as the building. Okay, members, comments, questions? A uh, question on the sign. So the sign is actually going to be facing South 4th Street, is that correct? Yes. Uh, what, way back through the parking lot? Yes. That's correct. You gonna, there's no recommendation for signage on, on the street of any kind? No. It must be a rail sign. Therefore, uh, that elevation is the only one uh, available for a rail sign. Now, what's going to happen? Can you describe a little further what's going to happen with the exterior elevation? Uh, the exterior elevation, they are going to, on the front right now, there's two doors. When the doors will be removed, there will be doors put on to the rear of the site. So there will be one entrance into the, into the building. But overall, the uh, main appearance of the building will remain the same. It'll be the remain, uh, be the residential mm -hmm. lap uh, siding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What about the fencing? That's there. <laughs> Seems to be. There's some uh, fencing at the rear of the site now. Again, um, it was it? was for to uh, say, but it needs to be removed. We're fine with that also. Well, I, I, I just have a feeling that um, the exterior appearance is supposed to be professional, it's supposed to look like a pharmacy, it's supposed to, uh, I don't see this looking like a professional office building to me. So, with no other improvements, I don't see how I could support this application. But if that's my opinion, uh, and we're not here today to, to redesign your application. Uh, we will be seeing it again in the planning commission, but I would consider putting a few dollars into the improvement of your building uh, to get the support of the overall commission. Question for Adam. Is the application with the knife? Probably the idea is that it's been helpful. Okay, so, so, Chairman, through you. So, I, I suppose there are two, there are two avenues. There would be the appeal, if they want an approval, they could, they could ask for an appeal. If they don't care, I suppose, if this board recommends denial, they can just move forward with this recommendation to the Planning Commission. But generally speaking, people would appeal uh, and ask the council for review. Uh, it's going to be up to the applicant in this case, if, if there were denial. Okay. Any more questions, comments, um, motion? I have a question. So based on approval today, this building specifically is going to go through planning uh, next. Like we're, 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 we're voting on the sign today. And building elevation. And building elevation. Yeah. And it's a little broader than the, the downtown design. When it was just strictly signs, it, it got broader with this process. Yes, Your Honor, if I might just remind the commission, when, when the city council approved uh, the business licensing standards, uh, for medical marijuana establishments, it did include a provision that said uh, both signage and elevations would come to this board. And so that's why you're seeing board, to this board, so for recommendations. So that's why usually you just, you just hear sign applications. Right. With these, you're hearing both sign and elevation. And could you remind us what the, uh, what, what our planning code said or the city council said in regards to the bill mill elevations? Well, I can tell you that with state law, I wish I had the, uh, what, what are the, uh, 
the words used by state law. It's a preferred. That is. That's where we're at. Professional. Uh, you can first pull up any of the. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Yep. Mr. Chairman, through you, um, the elevations are required to uh, adhere to professional, orderly, dignified, and be consistent with the traditional style of pharmacies and medical offices. So that's really, um, it's a subjective bit of information, um, but that's one reason why this is in front of a committee rather than a staff decision. Well, there's a matter of chairman, there's a matter of discretion here. This is the language that came straight from uh, the state law that required, that created the medical marijuana establishments. Uh, and and city council uh, sought to put this into your hands so we could get some professional review. Uh, as you know, uh, this board has members uh, that have expertise in, in this field, whether it's signage or or elevations, and they're looking for your recommendation. I have a follow-up question about the elevations. Then, so some of some we're seeing some landscaping in some of these elevations, and we're seeing pretty much painting in other elevations. Uh, is there a landscaping requirement by the city of any kind from development? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, as these are special use permit applications, there's no. Um, requirement for landscaping other than what is on the site uh, already. If they want to change the landscaping, then they can come forward with a site review um, in conjunction with the special use permit. And that has happened on a, a few of these applications. But you won't see any in front of you today. Uh, this is simply for the review of the elevations and the signage. Not including landscape. Not including landscape. Here's my concern, and uh, do I think it's an appropriate location? Yes, it fits our, it fits our location requirements. But when we talk about the more subjective uh, elevations to be of a professional or medical or pharmaceutical type nature, along with um, the signage, what I feel we're, we're looking at here is a 50-year-old uh, railroad home with a sign on it and all paved site. It, it, this isn't what I think, was, at least in my belief, what was intended by the requirements set forth by the council and the state. So in that regard, I, I can't accept, I can't, I'm not going to vote in favor of what's submitted here today. I'm Joshua Best, 810 South 4th Street. I'm the uh, representative property owner. I think that we have like no problem in, in doing changes like that when you go back and come around. I think the reason that the building itself, if you saw the broader picture, we own the all the way to gas, is next door is a special underwriting chapel. And um, the building itself, that is not the original siding, that is the exact grouping and siding to match. You can see just to the right of the building. The, the, with the, the building next to it. So when we did the building next to it, we also redid that. Well, we, we destroyed the rest of the buildings that were on there for parking and then took, kept that building for additional office space and did it to match the building to the right. That's the reason it has the siding and the, the condo roof, the, the shingle roof as it is, is to match the building next to it. So as far as upgrading the building need be for this particular business, I don't think that's a certain issue, but that's the reason why we have it. It looks the way it does at this point to match the, the landscape of that corner. Okay. If I understand it correctly, there's somewhat of a dilemma in that we're looking for an improvement to the level that it almost triggers a site review, which will put you in a delay that you can't afford. Because it's still residential, I and mean, even with the, the siting, it's, it's a residential structure and appearance. Yeah. And it's been converted, but right. it looks like a house. Yes, it's been converted to an office. But what would that trigger a site development review at some of the downtown centennial plan? I don't think that would hit that threshold. I mean, it, possibly. I mean, it would, the amount of elevation changes we're looking for. I mean, without seeing when we're talking about landscaping or just doing stucco on. Yeah, I mean, the reason that I, I, I can't recall what the original 
siding was, um, but the reason it has that exact siding on is it's the identical siding to the, to the structure to the, to the right, to the, to the north of it. So that is the reason we put that siding on and we didn't just start the building or like that. So I guess depending on what the requirements are, I mean, we already are, you know, removing one door, remove, you know, putting the, uh, the one entrance, making the main entrance signage, you know, so forth, getting rid of, you know, the look, the look of the house to a certain extent. But I mean, it's a, a pitch roof building, so I don't know what, was, what your requirements would be to make that, you know, we're stuccoing it, if we're putting some planners in front with a stucco. So that's really, that's really the, the question of the applicant and what they, what they perceive their business model to be. Right. And, you know, that several of the applications we've reviewed today, those exterior improvements go from paint to significant. Um, and, but we have to look at each application on its own. And when I, I look at what's here, I think this doesn't, at least in my opinion, reach that level that um, I anticipated application, applicants to bring forward. I echo the same thing, same things that the chairman has stated, and I, I, I like the sign. I, I would just encourage you to work with architect or work with somebody to really come up with some some type of scheme so it doesn't look like you're just walking into a house. It makes it look more professional, um, and that's something that we really can't design. It's something that you have to figure out. What do you What do you really feel would make this look professional? And I know. The reason why you did it because it matches across the street, but that that doesn't really matter here. What right. matters is what what's going to make that 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 place look great and professional and orderly. So, any absence of any other comments or questions by the members? A motion. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering um, how we would go about doing this. If the now we don't have the ability to offer time to redesign, yeah. the application process is rather rigid in its in its dealings and that's why these cl the time is what it is um, so I think we're stuck with voting on what's in front of us I would agree so um, just one question chairman yes. if the motion was denied you will have a chance to basically explain at a later date to the next approving body Absolutely, absolutely. So before, when you come before the Planning Commission, you'll be able to explain why you got a denial or, or approval and say you made the changes and this and that, if you so choose to make changes. Yeah. So um, within the parameters the staff will allow. Yes. But yeah, right. Let's say you don't have a chance to change something and then get to come back to here. So it... Um, you, you need to work with staff on how you proceed forward. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Chairman, I'm glad you said that because if there are changes that would trigger something else in our code, they need to apply for that something else as well. And I wouldn't want them to construe uh, your comments or conditions uh, as excusing them from those uh, code provisions. But let's see where motion takes us. Yes, uh, Chairman, on Adam. Number 12, SUP 55234, um, I would make a motion for denial um, due to the building elevations. I second that motion. And we do have a second. All those in favor, aye. Aye is for the denial. Please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Now we go to item 13, SUP 55248, DDRC, special use from the non public hearing applicant, Qualcomm of Las Vegas, owner Plaza Las Americas Holdings LLC, for possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 2,760 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 546. Northeastern Avenue, Suite 155. Mr. Chairman, this dispensary will be located within a multi-tenant commercial building that has a large consolidated sign on site. Um, but their signage will be located on the south elevation of the building. And uh, 
the sign, as presented, did not meet the size or height criteria of Title 19. Um, staff does recommend approval, but with the condition to survive, submit revised uh, conforming sign elevations prior to the issuance of building permits. Good day. Good afternoon, Chairman and Members of the Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm happy to call for calls and resolutions on behalf of Paul Can of Las Vegas, uh, the principal of which is with me today is President Bosco. Uh, we appreciate the staff's recommendation for approval and understand the condition and uh, certainly happy to address it appropriately. Comments and uh, members? Questions? We understand the need for council member to sign on the south base of it. Just above the storefront. So we're going to make a motion to approve item 13, which is 55248. Okay, there is a motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Um, just a question for staff. I know they have to have their, their sign corrected by um, before they actually get their sign permit. There's no, nothing yes. to prevent them from making a submittal of the corrected sign prior to that date, right? So it can be included in the package? Well, we have uh, deadlines for well, including them before they're notified. No problem. If they make it, they make it. For this meeting, I believe it is next. It's Tuesday, week. September 2nd uh, is our deadline to gather backup material. Right. Okay. So that this would be a revision to that sign elevation. Now we're on to item 14, HEP 55253, DDRC, Special Use Permit, Non-Public Hearing Applicant, Green Mart of Nevada, LLC, owned 1510 Company, for possible action on a request for the, for the review of a building and sign elevation only in association with the proposed 1,280-square-foot medical and marijuana dispensary at 1512 South Main Street. Mr. Chairman, this dispensary will be located within an existing inline retail building. The signage will be located on the east elevation and is in compliance with all requirements of the ordinance. Uh, two sign options were presented to staff. The applicant appears not to have chosen one, um, but in both cases, they would comply with the Title 19 requirements. So staff recommends approval um, subject to a standard condition. Good afternoon, Dr. Uh, Joel Love, I'm not free from the data. Uh, we're in agreement with all staff's uh, recommendation. Have you selected what sign you're going with? Um, I think we're going with the upper sign, but. That's subject to change? <laughs> well, we have two, and we haven't chosen yet. They're both in conformance with the sign here. All right. So we any other comments or questions? Okay. Okay. So we have a motion. Make a motion to Second. 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 Oh, we have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Item 13, SUP 55254, DDRC Special Use Permit, non public hearing item, applicant THC Nevada LLC, owner TNT Family Trust, for possible action and request for the review of the building and sign elevations only in associations with. 
a proposed 3,240 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1800 Western Avenue. And Mr. Chairman, are you ready for stuff? Yes, of course. Uh, this used to be located in a standalone building on two frontages with the appearance of a medical office. And uh, revised signage elevation dated July the 23rd was received, indicating that the two signs would meet the size and height requirements of Title 19, um, but also that they would contain neon tube illumination, which is not required or not allowed by the ordinance. Um, in your supplemental packet is the elevation which notes that the sign should be no more than two feet in height and no more than 30 square feet in area. And it still does mention the neon illumination. So staff recommends approval with an amendment condition number two that the revised sign elevation be submitted prior to the issuance of building permits. Thank you. Okay. Applicant. Mr. Chairman, members, Greg Wardell, 300 Top 4th Street, again in this matter. Uh, another case where the architect uh, couldn't decide whether to follow the, the code or the uh, medical marijuana code and did show neon. We accept the condition of a revised plan, but don't say neon. It would be the same sign, as you can see. It just wouldn't be neon. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, members, comments, questions? A motion? I do have one question. Is it dual frontage? Yes, that's correct. It's I'm sorry. I thought it was addressed to you. <laughs> yes, there are two frontages on the site. And you're using the entire building, is that correct? That is correct. Motion? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, item number 15, SUP 55254. Make a motion to follow staff's recommend, uh, recommendation of approval uh, subject to staff's conditions uh, with added condition and uh, to revise the sign application to be submitted prior to building approval of building permits. Actually, just, just a correction, it would be revising condition number two to add that portion to. So signage shall have no neon, but also uh, revised sign elevation should be submitted prior to the issuance of a building permit. All, right, thank you. All those in favor, or do we have a second? A second. Okay. We do have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Now on item 16, SUP 55264, DDRC Special Use from the Non-Public Hearing Applicant Clark NMSD LLC, owner of ProView Series 2 LLC, for possible action on a request for a review of building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 2,800 square foot Medical Marijuana Dispensary at 1320 South 3rd Street. I'm going to make a disclosure. I do own an interest in a property directly across the street from this. I don't believe the sign, it's vacant land. The sign issues aren't going to affect it in any way, shape, or form, and I will vote on the side. Okay, you're, you're, subject, you're subjective if disclosure is sufficient, so I would advise you to vote on this matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, according to the site plan and uh, site inspection, the actual building address is 1324 South 3rd Street rather than 1320. Um, the other existing in the building is to be demolished. Um, this building is proposed to have modified facades with windows on the north and the east elevations. Two wall signs are proposed. However, the property only has the 3rd Street frontage and therefore they're allowed only the one sign. Staff has determined that um, backlighting meets the illumination requirements, so we are recommending approval of the request subject to removal of condition number two, which currently states signage shall only have internal illumination. 
and uh, a revised condition number three that a revised sign elevation must be submitted prior to the issuance of building permits. Thank you. And just for the record also, um, uh, Mr. Garcia held a neighborhood meeting, actually one of the first ones held that, that I was aware of, and I did fit, avail myself of going to that meeting to see what kind of questions the neighbors were asking and found actually more applicants there trying to figure out what they should be presenting. But the building is, is pretty dramatic change for what's there and really kind of raises to what we expected as this process went forward. Go ahead. Chairman, Commissioners George Garcia, 1055, with your answer drive, uh, Anderson, Suite 210, pleasure to be before you. Uh, we believe the applications are consistent with both what state statute and with uh, local codes uh, required to create that professional and design uh, that would be reflective of a professional pharmaceutical uh, retail establishment. Um, obviously, it's going to be a dramatic change and upgrade to the area, and we concur with staff's conditions and, and recommendations and would hope Supportive. Happy to answer any questions, and I can show you any more exhibits if you'd like. Okay. Members, comments, questions? Um, motion? A motion to approve as staff's recommendation. Okay. Any changes? Do have a second? What about added conditions? Oh, added conditions with regards to the rear illuminated sign? Yes. Added conditions with the rear illuminated sign. And one second facial. Yes. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we go to item 17, SUP 55272, DDRC special use permit, non public hearing, applicant, Thomas Park Medical LLC, owner, MW LLC, for possible action on a request for the review of a building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 9,750-square-foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1112 South Congress. Mr. Chairman, just a disclosure, I worked with uh, Julie Murray on uh, custody loose uh, a couple of years ago. Um, that business is, uh, has been concluded and uh, we don't have any ongoing business relationships, so just wanted to make that disclosure. Uh, also disclosing that uh, I'm a current board member that uh, Moonwood Group is, uh, Julie Mary is managing uh, for the, for the uh, monitor, so I don't know if that would affect any kind of... Well, you have to, you have to ask yourself subjectively whether your relationship with her uh, would uh, materially affect your independence of judgment. To me, if you're sitting on board with somebody and you have uh, um, a, a communication with her, uh, and you, you might be you might be influenced uh, to do something uh, to, to vote in a certain way based upon your relationship with her. If that's the case, then you're saying. If the case is you don't believe the judgment is affected just because you're sit on a board of one of many boards that you sit on with her. Well, then you disclose and you move forward. Um, generally, I suggest to people that they act conservatively, but as you heard me read before, the state legislature wants people not to abstain, and only in those clear instances where your independence of judgment is um, going to be a, an issue, then, then you abstain. But there are board members that abstain at different, at different times, and I have seen people abstain when they have a relationship with an applicant as a board member on other uh, for-profit and non-profit enterprises. I will choose to abstain. Okay. Thank you. Staff? Um, oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, 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 as president of Fremont East Entertainment District, we have a contract and a business relationship with Moon Ridge, our company, and for that reason, I would have to abstain. Okay. So, uh, the, the, the good thing about the way the law is written is that uh, what we do is we, when we subtract the abstentions from the board, now we just recalculate the majority of bo vote with the board members that are left. So, there'll be, uh, there'll be, let's see, one, there'll be one, two, Three, four. Uh, there's there's five um, 
Vice Chair is not here. Right. Um, so you will need three votes to pass. Three votes will be pa for pass. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman, here we have a standalone building that uh, has painted concrete walls and some architectural embellishments. We do have one wall sign at the post that will be along the east elevation, and the sign is in conformance with all the Title 19 requirements. Um, therefore, staff is recommending approval subject to the standard condition. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we start, I just... Uh, You're going to point up with some more headaches here. Yes, I'm sorry about this. I just seen Steve Lindsay's name on this report uh, on a statement of financial interest. Okay. Um, he is a property owner, and... Steve Lindsay's owns Focus Plumman and 10 other properties, um, <coughs> or 10 other uh, contractors. We do use Focus Plumman, which is one of his, um, one of his companies, um, but I mean, approving an application or not approving an application isn't going to have any effect on there, but would you, would you what you're saying, what I what I hear you saying is your you don't believe your independent judgment would be affected because uh, one of the it appears that even though one of the members of the, the applicants uh, you have a relationship with, that relationship is not uh, such that it would affect your independent judgment. That is correct. Okay, then uh, you may load on this matter. Okay, so now we're going to get to another level of, that I think we have a solution for. Um, one of the people in my office is in the middle of acquiring a building from Mr. Menzies, and I just uh, <laughs> saw this. But since we will not have a quorum, I think it's appropriate that this would go forward with no recommendation, right? Well, no, we would still. Are you saying that you're going to abstain? I, I, well, no, we, we still have him. We still have two. You're out. I'm out. You're out. You're out. You're in. So we got three. Oh, no, we got three. So okay, we got three. That's good. Two wins. <laughs> We're good. But if this were city council, it would be different. The, the law says that we don't reduce the number. Uh, with regard to boards like this and planning commission, we do reduce the number for approval uh, based upon uh, allowed abstentions. And so we've got three. That means that three are left and two, two is uh, adequate for an approval. With that, we'll let staff proceed. <laughs> I've actually given my... Report, so the applicant can speak. Mr. Chairman, good afternoon and members of the committee. I'm here to request approval on Commerce Park Medical LLC. And you see before you the building design. It is located in the, in the industrial portion of the city of Las Vegas at 1112 South Commerce. It's a freestanding building currently, and should a licensing be approved, we would retrofit it to um, meet all of the requirements. The sign is two feet high by 15 feet wide. It's an aluminum frame with acrylic lettering and LED lighting. And I believe you all have a um, received a rendering of what it would be uh, with the rest of it. Yes, Ms. Murray, got a, I have a question for yes. you. Um, this property is located at 1112 South Commerce. So that's, uh, that's real close to Artistic Iron. And, or is that further down, it, it's, closer to Mexico City? It's just on the south side of Artistic Iron. So what okay. you see here is tucked right back to home. So it's just right in the part of the industrial section. Okay. The city of Las Vegas. And Looks like a great building and you're meeting all the standards uh, set forth by staff. I'm not sure if anybody else. So I make a motion to approve subject to staff condition to get condition of removal of the freestanding ground sign. Second that motion. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's all. That's enough. And we have three extensions. <laughs> Item 18, SP55275 GDRC Special Use Permit, Non-Public Hearing Item, Applicant Paradise Wellness Center, LLC, Owner Sheetak Development, Corporation LLC, for possible action on a request for the review of the building and sign elevation only in association with the proposed 3,680 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 2242, 2244, and 2246 Paradise Road. I am going to abstain on signing as much as I the property manager of financial interest in this property. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, anybody else? Any questions? Okay, uh, that's two of the staff for staff to mm -hmm. Uh, this dispensary would occupy three suites with an existing multi-tenant building, which has two frontages, one on uh, Paradise, one on Sahara. Uh, well signs are therefore proposed on the east and the south elevations, and both are con in conformance with Title 19 with regard to size, height, and illumination. Therefore, staff recommends approval, subject to the standard condition. Very good. The applicant, uh, please state your name. Good afternoon. My name is Colton Baltenbush, 400 South Rampart Boulevard, Suite 400, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, here with me as well is the applicant's CEO, Ed Bernstein. Uh, our sign plan is fully compliant with all state and local regulations, uh, size and area uh, appropriate. Uh, it's consistent with traditional style sign for pharmacies. Um, staff has recommended approval and we request that. Uh, the committee approved our Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any comments? And one question of staff. I saw three signs. I saw one of the west, south, and east elevations. Okay. <coughs> if, 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 I may, if I may address mm -hmm. the west elevation uh, sign is actually included erroneously. There's not a street frontage there. So the only sign we will be having that will be the east and south elevation signs. Thank you for the clarification. Make a motion to approve SEC 55275. Do we have a second? Second for staff position. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. I want to stretch. Item 19, SUP 55276, special use from the non public hearing applicant, Compassionate Care of Las Vegas LLC, owner Highland by the Highway LLC. So possible action on a request for a review of building and sign elevation only in association with a 3,004 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 2601 Highland Drive. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the sign elevations and building elevations are in conformance with uh, Title 19 requirements. Uh, staff has two conditions of approval uh, and uh, rec are recommending approval of this application. Okay. Daphne? And then, um, sorry, I'm sorry, I already talked about more here about coughing. I have with me Paul McHugh, who is the manager of the applicant, Compassionate Care of Las Vegas LLC. We reviewed over the conditions set forth by staff, as well as uh, the position of staff report this uh, application. It's a position of Title 19 as well as the last four months. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members, comments, questions? Uh, just to, so are you rehabbing the whole building? Is this, is, um, I did not get a chance to drive by it. Is there an existing picture we can take? Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> we will be rehabbing the entire building. Yeah. Good job. Looks like that. And if then the entire building part of the facility for the sub yeah, the entire facility will be utilized, and it's a two-part application. This is going to be a vertical integration. 
facility where we have cultivation and the dispensary at this location. So part of the location we utilize for cultivation and the part of the dispensary. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions, motion? Yeah, Chairman, on item number 19, SUP 55276, I move to approve, subject to all staff's conditions. Do we have a second? Second. There is a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. I don't know. Oh, no fives. <laughs> Quick comment or seconds. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to item 20, SUP 55277, special use permit, non-public hearing, applicant, owner, or applicant, GB Science, Nevada, LLC, owner, Wilson Medical, Center Downtown, LLC, for possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in associations with a proposed 4,188 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 921. South Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this item was proposed to be in a standalone building. The elevations are professional, orderly, and dignified and meet the requirements of Title 19. Uh, please note that this is on the Las Vegas Boulevard scenic byway area, and there is a condition number two of your uh, staff conditions that uh, is uh, recommending approval of the waiver of the requirement for NEON. Uh, staff recommends approval of this application. Okay. Applicant? Members, comments, questions? Just yes, comment um, for consistency's sake on some of the other uh, scenic byway where we have the waiver and there's another condition that says no neon. Right. Do we want to do that? It would seem to make sense to me. If you so desire. Yeah, well, look, the chairman, if I can, the, yeah. the code said that marijuana. Signs from medical marijuana establishments shall not have neon. That's, that's what the new code provision says. And so if you're asking, should we make sure that uh, this MME doesn't have any neon, that's probably a good idea to, to make sure it's in the plans of the code. If he has other signs that are not part of the medical marijuana establishment, uh, that might be interesting to know for you. But it looks to me like this entire building uh, may be the uh, establishment and therefore no neon should be on the building. Actually, it's a suite within... Oh, it's a suite? Oh, it's a suite. I apologize. The, the, the backup I received... Okay. Not related to... Yeah. The backup I received was incorrect. Okay. So I'm working on... So, so I suppose the answer is uh, the entire building doesn't need to be neon free. The medical marijuana establishment needs to be neon free. Okay. I have a question. So Wilson Medical Center currently is neon, right? Yes. And this new sign is going to be right next to it? Look at below it. Below it. All three locations. Oh, right there. Okay, sorry. Gotcha. Jeremy, it's hard to determine the uh, floor plan. We're actually going to speak so you don't know why it's not going to go get a reference to the sign. It appears that they're on the entire ground floor. And this, and this sign would be just north of the entrance, or just south of the entrance over the windows. So the same medical entrance, yes. It's a common, common elevator lobby. Yeah. So it will be a it, look. The discretion is yours, right? But uh, our code seems to contemplate that the signs for medical marijuana establishments are not to have neon and not other signs for other businesses in the suite. This one sounds like it's happened to be owned by the same guy. Uh, so. This is something for you, the Planning Commission, City Council, to, to decide. Okay. Is there no other questions, comments, motion? Make a motion to approve. Subject to uh, subject to the added conditions with regards to no neon. That. It's up to you guys. That's a, that has a bearing on the rest of the. 
Well, you're going to have to decide, uh, Chairman, if I may, you're going to have to decide if, you, if, you're, you're, if you're asking the, the applicant to uh, accept having no neon in this building altogether. But see, that there's an issue there because you probably had a DDRC approval from uh, prior to require that neon for this sign, right? So, uh, but we can make it subject to the one sign for medical marijuana. Sure, you can say no neon on the on the signs for the medical marijuana establishment, and uh, leave the rest as it is. I think you can probably just approve the application as it is, right. uh, without mention of any neon, unless you want there to be no neon on the building. And I think we're going to have to figure that out. I think we need to, if we're going to the findings that we made on earlier signs with regards to the more current code being uh, the uh, medical marijuana sign being having no neon if we're going to respect that code through the, the scenic byway I think we need to be consistent you know I think one building calls for neon where the other one doesn't so in that regard that's why I meant I, I just want to clarify that for the motion maker if you are, I would suggest this, though. If you are uh, planning to condition the removal of all neon, then we, need, we probably need to get some concurrence from the applicant. No, I meant no. I was going to tell you about that. I, was, I, 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 I misunderstand what you said. That's the only one before. Okay, very good. Perfect. And I'm, I'm willing to revisit that condition, being that this is somewhat unique to the other applications and that there's other uses. So I don't know if that condition is actually been required in so I make a motion to approve subject to staff's conditions, not having a condition to uh, bar any of Very good. I'll second. Can you explain that to me again before we vote? He's, he's just saying move to approve um, as, as uh, with staff recommendations only. And what I was talking about before, forget about it. So the fact of the matter is, no neon on the, the MME sign, leave the rest of the building alone. Oh, okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's what everybody understands. Then there's a motion. It has been seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Item 21, SUP 55278, DDRC, special use for the non-public hearing. Applicant. Natural Medicine LLC owner of the Jewelers Incorporated 401k profit sharing plan and trust for possible action on a request for review of buildings and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 2,414 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 2411 Western Avenue, City A and B. I'm going to stand on this item in as much as one of the agents of my office is. Uh, help them with some properties in uh, this applicant in another jurisdiction. So. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, th this application is uh, a dispensary that's part of a retail center. Uh, this is on the end, end cap of that retail center along uh, uh, the main frontage of Western. Uh, the signage is in conformance with uh, Title 19, uh, and the elevations are orderly and professional in nature, and staff recommends approval. David, uh, representing the applicant. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Greg Bordell, 300 South Hill Street, here for the applicant. We appreciate staff's faith in the comment, but we accept the conditions. For the record, uh, we know we'll have to remove the existing, probably already illegal, freestanding sign, uh, and the window sign will disappear when we take the window out. So, uh, we would ask for your approval. Any other any comments by commissioners? <coughs> Seeing none, uh, we'll then attend the motion. Yes, uh, Chairman, on uh, item number 21, SUP 55278, I'd move to approve, subject to all staff's uh, conditions. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? And one abstention. Thank you. Thank Good you. Day. Now we go to item 22, SUP 55280, DDRC special use permit, non public hearing applicant, Physis 1, 
LLC, owner LGC 231 LLC, for possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 1,868 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 231 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 110 and 120. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a dispensary that's uh, part of a inline, uh, uh, actually it's on the end cap of a, uh, a, uh, a center. Staff finds the signage to meet the requirements of Title 19 uh, and that the elevations are overly in the approval. I'd just like to disclose uh, I've done some business with Jeffrey before, so I don't know if that... Uh yeah, we have to be a little more specific about what business you've got. And, I mean, are you at an so existing contractual relationship? No. Okay. I leased a building from them many years ago, and uh, his office, the business I'm in, uh, provides leads to us as part of the... Uh, you know, again, this sounds like we're talking about your own subjective belief as to whether your... your um, independence of judgment is compromised in the situation. Uh, uh, it's, it's kind of a personal matter. It, it doesn't sound like it rises to the level of a need to abstain uh, currently, but uh, that it's going to be up to you. I'll take the conservative approach again and just abstain. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members. My name is Tony Celeste. I just say 345. West Sunset Road here on behalf of the applicant, FISIS-1. Along with me are managing members of FISIS-1 from my right to left, Steve Yokin and Michael Stein. We appreciate uh, staff's favorable recommendation of approval and expect for the Members, comments, questions? Chairman Erz, are you free to come down from the end of this session? We agree to that condition. We agree to that condition. There is a motion to approve item 22, SCP 552 AA. There is a second. I'm not trying to create confusion here. I just, the question came to me on some of these multi tenant where this has an internal hallway. Is there, do we ever address any other type of directional signage within a building? Is that? We have a separate There's no trouble. Oh, okay. That's fine. I'm just, so, yeah. I'm just trying to make Flynn's day. <laughs> 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 okay. Do I have a motion on the floor and it is seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unpleasant. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, item 23, SUP 55288, DDRC, special use permit, non-public hearing item, applicant, Top Farm LLC, James L. and Julie M. Gubler Trust, for possible action on a request for a review of building and sign elevations only, with a waiver to allow an internally illuminated wall sign with no neon where at least 75% is required under the Las Vegas Boulevard City Byway Overlay District. And it's a, in association with a 1,212 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1615 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a standalone building located on Las Vegas Boulevard. As such, uh, a waiver of, ne of the neon requirement is needed f to provide signage in conformance with the with Title 19 for medical marijuana establishments. And staff has condition number three added to the staff report as part of that. Um, I would like to delete condition number two uh, as, as the sign is either will either be internally eliminated or not eliminated. It's not clear, but we can address that at building permits and that condition is not necessary. Staff finds that the elevations are compatible with the area and recommend approval. Okay. Uh, the applicant? Anthony DeLuca, 4095, Okay. Uh, one thing, Mr. Tool, the donut sign will be removed, right? Yes. Okay. To further expand on that, that donut sign, in addition to the sign, the actual face, 
point of the party structure should be removed. That's fine. I just want to have the things cut off. Oh, okay. I'm not taking the federal. Gotcha. Right. Uh, another question. Staff, we received the backup and it shows this on the agent. Uh, there's no, there's no information how much that's going to be above the top of the roof. At the end of the wall sign, it's going to be top of the wall. It's going to be just kind of weird, six inches down the top of the roof. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. What's this kind of thing? I don't think we're doing signs that's directly above the roof. Hmm. Are you referring to the existing sign? Yeah, the, 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 the supplemental uh, backup material, uh, I, I don't believe it's correct. But it is the wrong signage. It's uh, The signage package is date stamped uh, August 4th. 4th, uh, 4th correct. Those are the correct sign elevations. And it's noted as a condition of approval condition number one. Now, in this sign package here, it shows two elevations, two signs. Uh, no, so we face the most planning. This is the nose. It has the sign that will approve and three standing signs removed. Okay, there's no sign on Las Vegas Boulevard. So correct. Correct. Okay. correct. Unrelated question, where's the donut shop going? Donut shop. I don't care. Sorry, we're at Goldman. That's where we're at. Which is originally in Favor, say aye. 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 Approved. Aye. Uh, opposed. That is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Item 24, SUP 55295, DDRC Special Use Permit Non-Public Hearing. Applicant Green Mart of Nevada LLC, owner 1510 Company, for possible action on request for review of buildings and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 4,000 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 2800 Highland. We did uh, say that we do have a problem with the uh, nameless ROM on our application, but for whatever reason it's uh, wrong name. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, the, the, the name is incorrect uh, on, on your notice. It has been since corrected and will be no, uh, properly noticed for the public hearing requirement and the correct name of the company is in, in life wellness, so please note that that, that has been corrected. Um, in regards to the application itself, um, the elevations are uh, in a professional manner and can be approved. However, staff notes that uh, the sign elevations as submitted indicated a freestanding sign along Highland Drive is, is to be utilized as signage, and that is not permitted by code. Condition number two of the staff report uh, reads as follows. The wall, the wall sign on the north elevation fronting Highland Drive is hereby approved. The freestanding sign along Highland Drive is hereby denied as it fails to meet the special use requirements. Uh, and uh, we would ask for your approval with conditions as read in. Um, also noting that the sign, uh, condition number three, the sign elevations approved on the wall sign are not to exceed two feet in height. A revised sign elevation must be submitted prior to the issuance of building permits. And then Chairman, I would just add with regard to the uh, typographical error, it doesn't rise to a level that would require re-notification pursuant to the open meeting law. Uh, uh, not the least of which reasons is that this is a recommendation to another body. And by the time this gets to the other body, that will be corrected and Everybody that would like to have notice will have notice of this particular applicant. 
Theatrical. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my name is Dan uh, Lutz. I am uh, one of the owners of Ben Life Wellness. So, uh, we will draw from uh, Hathaway the Monument sign. Okay, with us. We would like to have our uh, wall sign on the building backlit uh, and go uh, the 2 by 15 the uh, size that we go uh, over our door, so we about a 10 foot wide doorway. Uh, and we just uh, break the top of that. You're occupying the entire building or just a portion of the building? Uh, this is a portion. Uh, Members, comments, questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I can ask a question. Uh, if I could direct staff to put up the elevations of what they're proposing for the building to decide to look like. So, I have a question. Is the entire building being renovated? Or just the portion of the Just, just our portion. <laughs> Were there any comment or anything? Unfortunately, I did not have any. Uh, I, I can see Sure. For us to give this to the clerk as an exhibit, sure. that can be included in the package going forward. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the members? Motion. to approve CP55295 based on staff recommendations. Uh, I don't believe there are any other requirements. There's a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Is there any no site plan? What was that thing given to the clerk? Uh, well, there was an additional elevation. Had you submitted that previously to us? Yes. Okay, it was just not part of our backup. It was a removal of a sign on yours. Sorry. No. no. That freestanding sign is part of uh, a multi-tenant, or is that just for your building? It is a, it's a multi-tenant. It's a multi-tenant. Yeah, we yeah, not go on that. No. Okay. And condition, the, the condition of approval reflects that that would not be allowed. Okay. So, um, for that clarification, we have a second. Second the motion for We do have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Appreciate your uh, time. Yeah, if you give that to the we'll give that to the clerk. Thank you. Item 25, SUP 55300. DDRC special use permit, non-public hearing, applicant, Serenity Wellness Center, LLC, owner 1800 Industrial, LLC, for possible action on a request for review of building and sign elevations only in association with a proposed 4,969-square-foot medical marijuana dispensary at 1800 Industrial Road, Suites 101-160-180. Mr. Chairman, staff finds the elevations to be professional, orderly, and dignified, consistent with traditional styles of pharmacies and medical offices, recommends approvals of those. Staff also finds that the sign elevations provided are meet Title 19 and therefore recommend approval of those also. Board for staying home this afternoon. 
uh, we ask that you uh, kindly follow your staff's recommendations for approval for the first You're occupying which portion of the building again? And there is additional sign placement, um, at least it appeared to be on the building, like the screen to the left was allowing for tenant placement as well as, um, I can't remember on this one if there was something on the street or not. No. But your, your signage will just be over your space and not nowhere else, right? Yeah. Okay. Most of these improvements have already been done to the building, right? Correct. Or is there anything added? Is it be added to from a from a, uh, a facade st uh, standpoint? Is anything else going to be added? So it's it's the existing current upgrades that have happened in the last six months. Yeah. Is this sign going to be consistent with other businesses that are? You're sharing that mm -hmm. street. What? See, this this elevation here uh, shows the sign, which is located right there, which isn't shown in the photograph. Right about the uh, reflective coating and the uh, spandrel. Yeah, the top spandrel. Yeah, between. Yeah. Okay. Just so you walk, we walk underneath it. I, I guess my question is: I know there's other businesses on that ground floor. Are they? Do they have similar signs, or is this going to be different on them? Uh, yeah, they, they mostly have little signs. Uh, uh, right on the other side. Of course. Either sign would go to your tent space, other tents have the right to sign based on their choosing to move around. Okay. Any other comments, questions by the members? Motion. All those in are we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much for your time today. Now we're going to return to one item that item nine actually. Which I'll read again. SUP 55216, DDRC Special Use Permit, Non Public Hearing Applicant Owner, Yasmin Temranis, for possible action or request for a review of building and sign on the in association with the proposed 1,000 15 square foot medical marijuana dispensary at 815 South 3rd Street. We'll trail this item. And is there anybody else here? Representing this item again, objection pursuant to seeing none. Um, this is similar to the case we had the last meeting where we had applicants come with no, and, and not show up with regards to the process. Um, there is a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Now we'll go to that last portion of the agenda. Citizens participation. participation. Citizens participation is public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the Jurisdiction of the Downtown Design Review Committee, no subject may be acted upon by the Downtown Design Review Committee unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward to the podium with your name for the record, amount of time, and discussion. And if you wish to speak, make sure that I'm in our code. Then we will adjourn the meeting. And it appears we're back on our old schedule. They let us know when we have a meeting on. Thank you.